All right, in this video, we're gonna look at how to create a auto scroll text box. And uh, a little while ago, when I was talking about music lyrics a while back, I showed a manual way that you can scroll through song lyrics. And sometimes we don't wanna use that, but I encourage you to check that out for a manual approach. But a, a application here would be your song titles, maybe you have the artist in the song title. And sometimes that can be too long to fit inside of your text box or whatever you have. For example, here, uh, Chris Cornell, Worried Moon, it's fitting just fine inside of that box. But if we go to a song that is too long, for example, that one right there, notice we have it kind of scrolling back and forth and it turned green. Um, the green and the red is just a kind of a, a visual way of saying, okay, when we see green, it's gonna be moving. When we see red, it's not gonna be. And notice it does give us the end there. Um, this appears to be relatively smooth. It's not too fast, not too slow. Let's go to another one. That one right there, Chris Cornell through the window. And here's one that is not too long, so it's not gonna move. But if we look at this one right here, maybe that's a little bit too fast. Well, what we can do also, and this is the best way I could figure out how to do it without doing too much crazy number crunching, is just create a list global, and I can use these little arrows here, and I can actually slow this thing down. Maybe notice this number change up here. It's going to take four seconds for this thing to scroll from the C in Chris all the way to the end, the um, I, or excuse me, the S in Skies. But notice we are still getting the last letter of that thing. That is gonna require a little bit of tinkering with a number to get that to work correctly. And if I go to an even longer song, and that's gonna be somewhere right in her, there we go. This is one of the longer titles up here. So Our Time in the Universe remix, and we saw that X and it bumped right back. We can slow this down even more, just using a list global there. But as you can see, we are seeing green moving pieces and we're seeing the whole line of text, and then we're seeing red stuff when it's not too long. So let's go ahead and go into KOWP and have a look at how to do this. So inside of KOWP, we're gonna create four global variables. And the first one's gonna be a text global. I called it stuff. This is the stuff that I want to potentially move. And right now, as you saw a moment ago, we had the artist and the title. So that's how I have that set up. But since I'm gonna be teaching you this or showing you this, I'm going to uh, put some numbers in here. So I have 10 characters right there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a zero. I'm gonna put another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. That's gonna be 20 characters, and that is important. We want to find the length, how many characters or how many things do we have in there. So create another text global variable, and we'll call this one length. That's gonna give us the length of that thing, and as you can see, we do have 20. That is just a text converter code for length, and we want to get the length of this GV stuff. This will take into consideration spaces as well. So if I come back between this zero and this one and I put a space inside of there, um, we got 20 characters, but it counts that space, which we do want it to do that. So we're gonna return 21 now if we go look at this link. Notice we have 21. So now the reason why we need those two things is we have to also establish a cutoff. Um, a cutoff is gonna be, you know, how many characters are we gonna have in here that's gonna make it too long? So since I have 21 characters in uh, this thing right now, I'm gonna delete that space and I'm gonna put 33 of them in here. So that's 20, 31, 32, 33. That's 33 characters right there. And again, take into consideration, it'll count spaces and symbols and all that stuff. So if I go look at the length of this, notice it is returning a 33. And if I save this and go back to the home screen, as you can see here, right around 33 characters is where I'm getting close to the edge of my box. So that's why I want to create a cutoff. Um, basically, whenever we pass that cutoff is when, when we want to trigger that move. So let's go ahead and look at that. So if we go look at this cutoff, notice I have a cutoff set to 33. So let me come in here and let me add one more character, which is gonna give us 34 for our length now. And let's look at that inside of here. As you can see, we are getting 34. So something's gonna happen here. So if we save this and go back to the home screen, this is where we're going to see the green movement. As you can see, this thing is moving and I can speed it up by knocking my seconds down, but um, I'm seeing the one blah, 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 and it goes up to that four right there at the end. Now I'm gonna come back in here and add even more. So now look at what I've done. I, I don't know how many I got here. Uh, let's just go check the link. So we got 70 characters inside of here now. And if we save this, go back to the home screen. Now that's really fast, but I'm gonna slow it down 
So slowing that down to nine seconds, you know, it definitely does give it, uh, uh, it's easier to read at least. But what we're going to see here at the end of this animation is that we're going to see it, I don't know which one we're at, but you'll see a zero here. There it was, and it bounced back. So that's that number tinkering around that we're going to have to mess with right here in a little while when we go do some of our uh, durations and speeds and stuff like that. So now back inside of KOWP, uh, when you go to create your text, you're going to have to use a monospace font. You're going to have to find that cutoff yourself inside of your own text box. Yours might not be 33, uh, depending on what size you're using, but make sure you use a monospace font. If you don't use a monospace font, it will be harder to uh, find that, that magic point. Uh, monospace fonts, they have equal spacing between any character regardless of what character it is. And then the last global variable here is a list global variable, gvdir, and it's just a list global that I have for the number of seconds. So one second, two seconds, three seconds, all the way up to 10 seconds. Yes, we will be multiplying these by 10 because if you're aware, a 10 in duration stands for one second, uh, a 50 in duration stands for 50 seconds. But all we have to do is multiply these by 10 to fix that. So for our items, uh, the text item up here, that's just there to remind me how long my animation is lasting. That's up here at the top. Uh, so GV dur, and then I just got the word seconds. So three seconds is how long my duration is currently set to. You don't really need that if you don't want it. And then I have a music progress component. I did a tutorial on a circle progress indicator a while back, but uh, what I've done there is I've gone into there and I've hidden the artist name and the, the box that I had a while back, because I don't want to do that. Um, instead, I want to create an animation. So remember, you can't animate components, so we will have to you know, put this stuff inside of root of our preset. So border stuff. It's an overlap group, and it's this overlap group right here. And I just realized I could zoom on visor and move things around. So that's going to be this ring that we have right here, and it's also going to be these two arrows that you see right there. And that is going, the border stuff is just going to be that rectangle. Um, adjust your sizes, corners. Um, I've set a stroke to it. And then we also have this stack group that has the two arrows here and here. And these arrows here are going to adjust our time. So if I go to the left arrow, that one right there, whatever you use, you can use a font icon, toggle global switch, the global switch dir, that's that list global, and I have it set to previous value. So basically it's going to go backwards through these numbers. When it's at one, if we press the arrow, it will go back to this 10. So it will loop through that list. And then the same thing applies to the right arrow as well, except now I have that one set to go to the next value. So that'll go up through them. And then when it goes to 10, when it's at 10 and it goes to next, it will cycle back to one. So that's it for border stuff. Now let's talk about clip stuff. Clip stuff is going to be a rectangle of the same size. Its pane is set to fill and FX is set to clip all. So it's gonna clip everything that shows up in this root beneath this. Um, I have it set to clip all, as you can see right there. But like I said, that is still pretty much the same rectangle as the ring, except it's you know it was set to fill. And then we have it clipping everything down here. So these are the last two pieces. We, we want to create two of them here. I've experimented with fading one in and fading one out. It wasn't smooth because of the way things were changing and moving and stopping. I didn't like it. So what I've resorted to is I've created two overlap groups. Um, they have the same stuff inside of it, but the positioning and everything's going to be different. So make sure you're paying attention to this right here. Let's talk about the steel stuff first. This is going to be the one that holds the stuff that's steel. It's not going to be moving. So there's going to be no animations here. However, it is important that the only time I want to see this stuff, well, let me talk about that first. What is this stuff? Um, all this junk is just GV stuff. So we have it linked to that global variable. Um, it's a monospace font. Make sure you pick a monospace font. And fixed font height, I have it set to 25. If you want to follow this exactly, you got to set it up like that. Your numbers will be different if you're using a different font probably or a different font size. So keeping that in mind, let's go over to the position for this thing. And basically, whoops, let me make sure I go to the position of my overlap group. I have it set to center, but basically you want to position this thing so that it'll be centered inside of the, the text box right there. Now some things to keep in mind, um, I did notice earlier, like if I had a whole bunch of characters, it was going over to a new line without me even telling it to go to a new line. If you find yours is doing that, what you're going to have to set up is uh, change this to a, a fixed width 
fixed width and make that width really wide so it stays all on one line. I don't know why I was doing that earlier, but I think it was over 100 characters, and I don't think any of my song titles are going to be that long anyway. So, again, we only want to see the red word. Now, notice this one here is the red one. I only want to see that when my text will fit inside of that box. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna to go to the layer and for its visibility, I'm gonna apply code to it. So if the length of my stuff, I've showed you that back in the globals, if the length of that stuff is less than or equal to my cutoff, and our cutoff was set to 33 and earlier when I showed you the globals. So if the length of my stuff is less than or equal to 33, I always wanna see this. I always wanna see the steel words, the red words. Otherwise, I never want to see it. Now, again, I didn't apply animation here. This is just going to make it either show or not show. It's not going to be a fade, but I think it works better. And you saw that earlier um, that you can try a fade if you want. I didn't like the way it looked. Okay, so that's how we can adjust the, visi the visibility of steel stuff. So let's go over to move stuff. Now, it's, it's the same stuff here, same size, but something important to note here. When this animation, when we talk about the animation in a minute, I want this animation or the first word of whatever stuff I have, I always want it to be right there. I want it to start there. So we have to adjust the position here. And the position of this overlap group that I've called move stuff is going to be center left. What center left will do is it's going to uh, always start it in that position. If you have this set to just plain center, it's going to center the word. So you might have stuff over here and stuff over here. Set it to center left, scroll um, or move your offsets to wherever you want it. And notice here, um, I do have the X offset set to 120. So uh, that's what's allowing me to put it inside of that text box right there. The Y offset, I think, is the same as the steel one, but the X offset is what's different. You want to move it so that the beginning of your text is inside right there at the edge of your text box. Now let's look at its animation. Just one animation, loop with return. It's gonna make it go back and forth. It's set to scroll, and it's always gonna be doing this. Now, actually, before I jump into the animation, let's talk about this layer of visibility. So when do I wanna see this one? Um, when do I wanna see my move stuff, my green words? That's gonna be if the length of my stuff is greater than cutoff. So whenever I have um, some stuff that is longer than the cutoff that I've set, I always want to see this one because this is the one that's going to be moving. If it's not greater than cutoff, I never want to see it. So this is like my, um, the way I do it instead of fading it. So again, this animation that's looping, yeah, it's always going to be looping, but you're only going to see this when you need to see it, when your words are too long. Otherwise, the layer of visibility is going to make it go away. So that scroll, I had the E set to straight. You could uh, try the normal there, but I just left it at straight. Duration, I have that set to GV dur times 10. Because GV dur right now is set to three, three seconds, but to get it to be three seconds, we have to multiply it by 10 in our actual duration. And now the speed, this is the funky stuff. So what I'm looking for first is to figure out, okay, again, we're only going to see this stuff move when the length is going to be uh, bigger than the cutoff. So if we find the difference between those, basically you're finding how many extra characters, spaces, or whatever do you have uh, more than your cutoff. For example, suppose the length was 40 and our cutoff is set to 33. If we find the difference between those, we're going to get seven. We want to multiply that. In my case, I want to multiply it by 2.05. You're gonna to have to experiment with that number there. But basically, back at the beginning and some parts of the video, I was showing you how when it would scroll, we would always get the right side of that text. The right end of that text would show up and then it would bounce right back off the screen. 2.05 is what I had to use here. You have to experiment with this and you wanna to try to get it as precise as possible because if you just said times two, sometimes it might not go all the way. Sometimes it might go too far, uh, depending on what number you use here. But 2.05 is what pretty much gave me um, the right end of my text. The right end of my stuff would always scroll in. And as soon as you saw it, it would scroll right back off. So that's the number you're going to have to mess with here. But again, uh, watch your parentheses. Make sure you put the subtraction here in parentheses so you're obeying order of operations. We're going to work inside the parentheses, find the difference between these two, and then multiply it by that thing right there. And then the angle needs to be set to 180. That way we can scroll in the right direction. That's what's going to make it go to the left, which is going to bring this right side in. And then once that right side comes in, 
check this out. See if it's going to do it. Boom. See how that right end's coming and it's going back out? That's based off of that speed, me tinkering around with that 2.05 that you see right there. But if you have all that set up correctly, I think that is just about it. Make sure you set your angle to 180. And so, yeah, let's just go back into our globals and let's change our stuff. I'm going to um, get it to something that's always going to be moving. How can I do that? I'm going to do my artist. I'm going to do the album. And then I'm going to do the song title. More than likely, uh, every single one of these is going to be bigger than my cutoff. If we have an artist, uh, album, and a song title, how long is that? Yeah, 65. <laughs> so my cutoff is 33. So this thing should be moving when I save this and come back to the home screen. And that's a little bit too fast. So we can bump that on up. Now I got a six second animation. I can even bump it up more. So uh, Chris Cornell preaching the end of the world and it should show the D and there as you can see it bounced right back off the screen. Um, yeah, I've been listening to him and you bet I've been li listening to Linkin Park a lot lately too. But uh, yeah, there you have it. That's how you can create an automatic scrolling text box. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.